going to show you how to do a very simple disposable bag using a right angle triangle. I just used a little bit of baking paper. So what I need to do is I need to curl that point around to meet that point. And then I need to bring this point around to meet that point in the middle. Now this is roughly where you're starting, but there's two things to really make sure you nail. And one is there is no hole, which we do have a bit of hole at the moment, and no gap between these two pieces, which we don't have gap, but we have a hole at the moment. So what you need to do, this little bit sticking out on this side, and that little bit sticking out on this side, you need to shuffle them up and down till you get no hole and no gap, which I have no hole, no gap, but you might think, oh, it's out of alignment. That is not the most important thing. You've got no gap and no hole. Then you fold it over. It'll be around the area, but I also just hand cut this from a roll of paper. And then I fold it a few times. I put it down because I find it'll unravel in my hands otherwise. Because you're trying to replicate a real bag. And a real bag, when you buy them, are roughly, you know, flat. So you're folding till you get that sort of flat imagery again. So it's not all the way up here and I'm not folding beyond down the side of the bag. And that'll help reinforcement. I like to fold about three to four times and then I've got a good open cavity. You definitely want to make sure you use new paper every time. If it's been scrunched, it's going to be hellacious to try and use. In this case, we've got some melted chocolate. Now, I highly recommend you don't fill more than halfway in the bag. So you can see what's going on through the bag. So that's a great amount. Happy days. There is an art to shutting it. Now, because it's melted chocolate, I'm not going to put it flat on the marble because the marble is going to want to help it to cool down. If it was royal icing or something like that, sure. What you want to do is fold it. See that line? You want that always to be in the middle, not off to the side. It could be prone to unraveling or you just lose control of the bag. So you can just hold it shut. And you want to try and shut it so you don't get air trapped in it. So when you're piping, it's not going to be a nuisance. Then what I do is I fold from here. So it sort of stops around there and I fold. Stops around here and I fold. Like that. Now remember, always that line there so it can reinforce. So every time you fold and fold again, it's nice and taut and nice in control. And the reason why you don't want any hole is so you can cut it to the size that you like. And as you pipe and pipe and pipe, so for instance, I'm just going to cut a big hole, so I want to show you how to adjust. So let's say I pipe a whole lot out of it, awesome, great. Well then what I would do after a while is I would open it back up and refold here and refold there and then refold and refold and then pipe. So when you pipe as well, you need to feel comfortable. If this is comfortable for you, by all means. If this is comfortable for you, by all means. But you need to feel like you've got control. A lot of people recommend that you hold your breath because when you talk, you move. Obviously, you have to stop and breathe now and then. See, during drawing a line, if I drag it across the marble, even if I think it's straight, it's still a little bit, has a bit of movement. When you pick it up, so I, I touched the marble and then I came up and it's definitely a better straighter line than trying to drag it along the marble. So that's some simple piping tips. Be comfortable and practice. <laughs>